Good morning everybody, welcome to Pete on Retreat. Today I'm going to talk about how I decided to move to Pattaya, Thailand. Hello everybody. My name's Pete and in 2022, I sold everything I owned so I could retire early at age 49 and move to Thailand. I'm on one of my normal morning walks in Pratinak and today I wanna to talk about a few things. I wanna talk about how I picked Thailand to move to. I wanna talk a bit about why I picked Pattaya to move to and about living in the city of Sin. And then I wanna talk specifically about why I picked this Pratimnak area to move into. When I first decided to retire at 49, I had this idea of traveling around the planet and seeing where I might wanna settle down when I turned 60. My basic plan was to spend a few years in Asia, a few years in Europe, and then a few years in Central America. I knew I wanted to start in Asia for a few reasons. Number one was that it was probably going to be the cheapest of the three regions. Starting here would allow me to save more money so I had more money to spend in other areas. The second reason is because my father's still back in the States. He's pretty damn healthy. I don't think he's going anywhere anytime soon. So I wanted to start as far away from him as possible. No, I'm not trying to get away from you pops. But the idea was that I would move closer and closer as these next 10 years go on. Okay, so I knew I wanted to start in Asia. The next question is what country to start in. And more specifically, I knew I wanted to start in Southeast Asia. The cost of living in most Southeast Asian countries is just incredibly affordable. If you want to see what my costs were for my first year here, I've got a video linked in the description. It's got a full breakdown of basically every dollar I spent the first year I lived here. So, Southeast Asia, but where? It didn't take long to narrow it down to Malaysia, Vietnam, and Thailand. It's been over two and a half years since I made the decision to move out here. I can't exactly remember why I settled on those three countries. Probably had to do with safety, healthcare, cost of living. Whatever the reason was, my next step was to narrow it down to one country. Ever since I started looking into Thailand, the kingdom's been calling me. There's obviously a lot of expats that live out here, so there was plenty of information to easily be found on the internet and on YouTube. The real deciding factor was whenever I started talking to people about this idea, Many of my friends said they absolutely love Thailand. I was kind of surprised how many people I knew that had taken vacations out here. There was people at work and people in my D&D community. Some of my players have a father that lives out here. My stepsister or sister-in-law, I get those confused, but she's got an uncle that lives out here. And nobody I knew had anything negative to say about Thailand. So that's it. This is where I decided to move. Okay, so where in Thailand do I start off? A lot of people live in Bangkok. Bangkok's got a huge expat community. It's a metropolitan city with international flair. There's lots of events going on. It's got good public transportation, but I'm not really a city person. One of my favorite YouTubers at the time, Keese One, lives in Bangkok. I got to see what living in Bangkok's like, and it's just too much for me. The amount of traffic and the amount of people in my day-to-day day life is just not what I'm looking for. Okay, what about island life? Thailand's known for many of its different islands and you've kind of got a choice of what type of island life you'd want. There's small beautiful islands like Koh Chang, Koh Samet, and then there's city islands like Phuket. I know a few people that have lived in Hawaii over the years and most of them end up moving back to the States, except for my buddy Bird. Oh, and now I think about it, Leo still lives out there too. A lot of them said they moved back because of just kind of feeling isolated, kind of getting bored with island life. I am tempted by island life and that might be a segment of my life out here in Thailand, but I don't feel that's quite what I'm looking for now. 
It especially wasn't what I was looking for for my introduction to Thailand. Phuket just seems like too much for me. Cost of living isn't great over there. It's a huge tourist destination. Yeah, I know. Pattaya is a huge tourist destination. But something about Phuket just didn't feel like a good place for me to start. And I wasn't going to pick a tropical paradise island blindly without going there first to live. Okay, so a beach town. I grew up in San Pedro, California. A lovely little beach community nestled in between Long Beach and more popular beaches. Officially a part of Los Angeles while not feeling like Los Angeles the city proper. I know the benefits of living by a beach. You get cooler air, a different kind of mindset and vibe, and beautiful views. Next I looked into Huai Hin. Hawaii Hin is a beach city or town with a large expat community and it's very affordable. A lot of things were tempting about Hawaii Hin. It's not that far from Bangkok, but I did hear people often got bored there. I mean, boredom was one of my big concerns with retiring early and it just didn't feel like it had enough for me at least to start my integration into living to Thailand. Another place that I very much considered was Chiang Mai. Chiang Mai seems like an obvious fit for me, for most people that know me. It has a cooler climate than Pattaya. It's in the north part of the country. I think it's near some mountains. It's a pretty large city. In fact, it's larger than Pattaya, but it's not as big or as crazy as Bangkok. It's got a large expat community. It's got cultural offerings. You can live outside the city where it's nice and quiet. I really thought that eventually I would be living in Chiang Mai, even if I didn't start there. There's only one big problem, and that's the burning season. If you don't know, the burning season in Thailand runs three to five or six months, depending on what source you look at. It basically starts end of January, uh, peaks around March or April, and then is mostly dissipated by the start of June. I've had asthma for pretty much all my adult life. It started back in high school. I actually don't have many issues with asthma now. I don't even carry my rescue inhaler with me anymore. I treated my asthma with medications for years and years. I'm also an ex-smoker, so my lungs aren't great to begin with. That crossed Chiang Mai off my list, at least for my starting location. Like I said earlier, I really thought I would live in Chiang Mai someday. But after moving here to Thailand and talking to people that live there, I think the burning season's probably too much for me to handle. Yeah, I'm sure I could survive it, but the damage to my lungs isn't really worth it. I grew up living in LA, I'm an ex-smoker, and I really don't like the idea of having to kind of hunker down during burning season and avoid going outside. Okay, that's why I didn't move to any of those other places, but why did I pick Pattaya? First off, there's a large expat community here. I wanted my transition into living into Thailand to be about as easy as possible. I knew it would be at least somewhat easy to find some friends out here. I knew being a tourist city that there wasn't going to be much of an issue with language. Yeah, I planned on learning Thai and I've gone to school for six months. There's a link in the description to my videos about learning Thai. I knew that living here, you don't have to know how to speak Thai. I also love live music and I love going to the movies. Movie theaters is something I actually researched before moving here. I was very happy to discover that there are several movie theaters here and that you could see Western movies in English with Thai subtitles regularly. There's also a lot of bands here in town. I miss the original music I would see back home, but the cover bands here are top notch. Like I said, I'm not a huge city person, but I do like being near cities. I knew Pattaya had a lot to offer as far as city things go. There's festivals here all the time, there's movies, there are some museums, there's a lot of options for shopping, and you can get Western food here. While it doesn't have the same cultural offerings compared to Chiang Mai or Bangkok. It's a nice medium-sized city, so I thought it'd be a pretty good place to start. It's a huge tourist destination, so I knew there was going to be a lot of things to offer in those lines. Things like gardens and parks and Sanctuary of Truth, different attractions like Dolphin World. It's got go-karts and just all kinds of stuff to, you know, 
spend a day checking out. Like I said, my biggest concern retiring early was that I would get bored. And of course, it's got beaches. Now I talked about in my last video how Patia's beaches aren't ideal for swimming. That's perfectly fine. I've got a swimming pool and so do most of my friends. But I know that beaches offer me a slightly cooler climate. They offer me a higher chance of having a breeze during the day. And there's also just a certain vibe and mindset that goes along with people living at a beach. Oh, and of course, it's just lovely to get to look at. No matter how dirty the water might be, it's still beautiful to see. Did I forget to mention it's near Bangkok? Yeah, Patia is like an hour and a half, maybe two hours of traffic south of Bangkok. So if I ever want to go up for any more culture or any concerts or travel somewhere, grab a plane and take off, I'm very close to Bangkok. In fact, we're headed to Bangkok in just a few hours to fly out to Khan Kin. That might be next week's video. Make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to see that video when it pops up. So yeah, an hour or two away from Bangkok, beautiful beaches, tons of activity, large expat community, wide availability of shopping and food from around the world. Pati is a great place to start. But Patia is also known as Sin City. Is that really the life I'm looking for? If you're not aware about Patia's reputation, it is definitely a party town. It kind of kicked off in the 70s when American soldiers would come here on break from the Vietnam War. Many of them hung around afterwards. And that's what really kicked off Thailand Sin City. Nowadays, it's home to thousands and thousands of bars, as well as go-go clubs and one of the largest red light districts in the entire world. Gambling's not legal in Thailand, but in many ways, Pattaya puts Las Vegas to shame. But just like Las Vegas, there's a lot it has to offer outside of sinful activities. I'll be honest here. I was absolutely intrigued about the whole sin element of coming to Pattaya. I love Las Vegas. I even considered moving there for a time. I've always been interested in different types of counterculture and different like alternative lifestyles. I thought that aspect of moving here would be kind of cool as far as kicking off my retired life. You know, let's start retirement off with a huge party. And it's also why I thought I would only live in Pattaya for three to six months. I plan on doing a video of how I got stuck here. I'm not really stuck, I can leave if I want. So I won't get too much into that today. While Patia has got a much well-deserved and well-earned reputation as being this crazy place, a city with cheap beer, cheap boom boom, access to illegal drugs, who knows what other types of debauchery, and sadly the ruin of many expats that move here and aren't ready to deal with this amount of temptation. It's also the home to many people I know that don't ever drink and don't partake in any of the vices here. How do I deal with living here when considering its reputation and how that reflects on me? Very easily. My family and friends know me. I don't have to prove anything to them. They see my work here starting a foundation. And as far as what anybody else thinks, who really cares? If this is where you want to move, move here. Every day this city gets more and more people that move here not for the party scene. Yeah, I moved here partly because there's a party scene, but what's funny is I've gone to the dance club once. Yeah, I've gone to a few nightclubs. I've definitely hung out in some of the lady bars, but a lot of that was really just out of curiosity. Lastly, I wanna talk about Pratimnak. Yeah, that's this beautiful, quiet neighborhood you see behind me as I walk in these videos. Pratimnak's actually got three different areas and I still plan on doing a whole video about Pratimnak so people back home can see exactly what it has to offer. This area here is known as the Cozy Beach Side, also known as Kazitsin or Rachawarun. This main street right here is Rachawarun. When I moved to Patia, I moved around several times the first few months. 
I tried different areas of living and I quickly ruled out the city. If you're not going to live in the city, you've got a few options. You can live out on the dark side, you can live up north in Naklua, or you can live down south in either Pratinac or Jom Tien. The very first place I moved to when I came to Thailand was right here. That's the Point Pratinac and it had this incredible view of the bay, a pool on the 16th floor. And while I liked that building, I fell in love with this neighborhood. If you want to see what this neighborhood was like when I moved here, check out my video on Racha Warun. I'll have it linked in the description. This neighborhood is just 10 to 20 minutes away from the city, depending on how far into the city you're trying to get. It's surrounded by water. It's got this amazing private little beach. It's not a private beach, but it's just a little beach and the only access to it is through this neighborhood. This neighborhood feels secluded too. It's only got one street that leads in and out. There are no other ways to get into this neighborhood and I really like that. Living here for the first month, I got a great feel for the neighborhood. Quickly got favorite places like Chillin' Home Cafe. And it didn't take long before I would just walk through the neighborhood and be greeted by people. It's got that great neighborhood feel and you start to just know people. I see the same people on my morning walks. Speaking of morning walks, I also love this neighborhood because it helped make my YouTube channel. Yeah. Having these quiet streets to walk on in the morning, I mean mostly quiet streets, I got out a little bit late today, so it's a little louder than it normally is. But having these quiet streets to vlog on was a big reason why I came back to this neighborhood. Another huge selling point is Patia floods. It notoriously floods every year. Different areas with different storms and Pratunak is a hill. I'm not sure how much you can see right now, but this street behind me slopes the entire way down. And it, when it gets to the end of all the fancy popular restaurants, there's a cliff that goes down to the beach. It is literally impossible for this neighborhood to flood. And I really like having that secure feeling. My girlfriend and I are getting ready to move or likely move. We wanna get a cat, maybe a dog, maybe have a garden. We're currently looking at different villas to move into. Last week, Patia had some pretty big storms and several areas flooded. We're off to Con Ken today to get a new car and my girlfriend said, I think maybe we should stay in Pratimnak. It'll be good for the car. When we get back from Con Ken, we're going to walk all around this neighborhood, just checking out different condos and seeing what rooms are available. So yeah, this neighborhood, it's quiet. It's reasonably pretty. It's got beautiful views. It's right at the base of these two cool hills, Pratimnak hill and big buddha hill it's got wonderful trails for walking around the piers just on the other side of the hill we could see it from our room i just love this neighborhood and fell in love with it almost instantly several of my friends have moved to this neighborhood because i showed it to them many people don't even know this neighborhood's here i was all ready to move to either the dark side or john tin or maybe one of the villas off of tepersit i was looking forward to checking out a different neighborhood but now i'm really hoping we stay here in pratinac